Hello everybody and welcome to this new video. I will be preparing the last couple of things that I still have to do before my dwarf hamster moves in. Um, here you can see the enclosure I have. If you watched the setting up video, I still haven't edited the long, longer version of the video. I'm really sorry, I will be getting to that sometime soon. Um, but you might have seen that I had a different wheel in the enclosure. I have now changed to this silent runner because I think she really likes wheels that are covered in the front. So I will be using this one instead. And I have added my little camera, which I still have to connect to the power, but I just like to have a camera in the enclosure so I can see what she's doing when I'm not around. And it does record in the night time, so I see when she wakes up if I don't see her in person. So it gives me a bit more control if I don't see her regularly. Um, yeah, I still have to close the gaps in this little um, bendy bridge. And in this one, I will be doing this in this video. Just, um, I'm just closing them so she can't get her little paws stuck in there. Um, yeah, I'll show how I close these now. Uh, I now just have everything on my desk that I want to use. I have, of course, the bridges. I have paper to put underneath. So my desk mat, which is already covered in glue and paint, doesn't get any more dirty and I have some terrarium moss and some non-toxic solvent-free wood glue that I will use to glue the moss in all of these little gaps. So what I like to do is just take some of these moss fibers I guess I could call them and I take some glue put it in the gap just fill the gap and then I take the moss and I just stuff it in there so the gap is closed. Um, you could of course use just the moss. I like to glue it in there just to make sure that you can't pull the moss out easily, creating a new gap um, because I really don't want anything to happen to her uh, because I've heard of a lot of cases where dwarf hamsters or even Syrians or other hamsters have gotten their paws stuck in these gaps and some of them even had to have their leg amputated or some got hurt so badly that they died because of the injuries and because it's very preventable I just want to make sure everything is safe for her so I will close every little gap even these really small ones just to be sure So, I don't think I've talked about the dwarf hamster here too much yet, so I'm just gonna tell you a couple of things about her while I'm closing these gaps. Um, yeah, she is a hybrid dwarf hamster, she's a girl, I don't remember how old she is. But if I remember correctly, she came to the rescue, I think at the end or middle of March. She was around, I'm not sure if this is correct, I think she was around six weeks old then. So she's probably around three months old now. I'm really not sure. But she is still very young but she already had babies she came into the rescue very pregnant and had six or four i don't remember that either um babies a couple of days later they were the cutest babies ever they were absolutely adorable um they have all found forever homes already so they have all moved out so i unfortunately won't get to meet them but that's okay and yeah 
she is very cute she seems to be very small I don't know how much she weighs I'll weigh her when I see her um, she was very friendly and active in the beginning but I think now that she's finally in her own enclosure she's gotten a bit more skittish and just a bit more timid maybe because just because of the change because she's on her own now but we'll see how she settles in here i'm very excited to have a dwarf hamster again um, i've had two dwarf hamsters separately of course um, before a male and a female i had the male first female after him um, and i really do miss them i've always been more of a syrian hamster fan but not having a dwarf hamster was really sad i don't know they're just so different from syrians and i'm very glad that i'm now able to have a third enclosure so i can have a dwarf I have now closed all the gaps as you can see here oh here's a little gap it's always good to look at it through light because if the light shines through you can see that there's gaps left or not so you can close all of them very tightly like this and now everything should be closed so no, none of her little paws or toes can get stuck in here. I'll just set this aside while I do the other one. I'll just do the same. I have, I made this bridge myself. So here are some bigger loops. So I'll just cover them with glue too and put on some moss. But I'm gonna go get some more moss because this brown stuff is not really nice looking. Um, so just again to show, um, this is the terrarium moss that I use. It's from the brand Trixie. It's for terrariums or reptiles. Yeah, I really like using this one. And I have a little more green piece here, which I'll be using now. set it aside to dry as well and now I have some couple of small things that I still have to do in here underneath the stone platform is the multi-chamber house and I definitely regret putting it there because the lid is so heavy and it's a very impractical to this out I now just have this I have this little corner toilet from Rody Pet and I'm gonna fill it with some chinchilla sand and I'll set it in here I have a little wooden platform in this corner where I can set it on I'll just go 
up like the entrance so she can find it easily. Um, just if she wants to use it as her toilet, she probably won't. Most of my hamsters have never used it. Um, but it's worth a try, I guess. And I'm gonna add some masking material. I'm gonna use some white KT Clean and Cozy in this middle one. Just some ripped, um, unscented, undyed toilet paper for the last chamber. Just rip it into shreds. Just so she can use them if she wants to. Pretty much everything is finished. I have everything ready. I have some more nesting material in here. I have all of her sprays. I will put one water bowl and her fresh food bowl there. And she'll have another water bowl over here. Um, just because I like keeping two water bowls in the enclosure in case one of them gets dirty or Really silly reason that I don't want her to have to walk too long if she wants to get it in during the day. So she has one water bowl in either side of the enclosure, so she's always near to the water source in case she gets thirsty. And now this second ladder, I made one for here, like this. Now she can get up and down there. Um, I'll have to see if she wants to get down here. I might have to make another one for there, but I'll just keep it like this for now. And over here she can just get down and up really easily. Now I just have this metal lid for the terrarium soil. I'll be keeping this on for now. Um, it's May 1st now. Almost, it might be past, past midnight already. So either May 1st or May 2nd, and she's moving in on May 9th. So I'll be keeping that closed, so the soil just stays fresh. It's a bit moist, um, which the hamsters usually like. It's not too moist to be harmful, but just a little bit. So I will be keeping the lid on so it stays that way, but I'll of course remove it when she's moving in just so everything is ready. Another quick overview of the enclosure, so you can see it. And to show this, this is a little climbing tower. There's a hole back there so, so she can get down. And then there's a hide beneath there, so she can hide there as well. Um, I hope she likes that. And my favorite thing, of course, because here is my bed, here is like where I have my head when I'm sleeping, and here's the little watch box, which I really hope that she sleeps in, but she probably won't, but I mean, it's worth a try. So now I have everything prepared for her, I hope you liked this video, um, I'll try to film her reaction when she's moving in. The enclosure I don't know if she'll be up to that because we do have quite a long train ride to get home so she might be stressed but I'll try to get at least a couple of pictures which I will be posting on my Instagram um, yeah thanks for watching see you next time bye